I wonder what your transfusion parameters are for red blood cells and platelets, irrespective of other comorbidities. Um, Rami, what do you use? For platelets, I think we usually go down to like less than 10, probably. Like when they're, you know, platelets are less than 10, we transfuse, unless again, if there's bleeding events uh, or, or other factors. For uh, red blood cell transfusion, I, I think I really individualize those based on the patients and we just what we described. You know, if somebody is really asymptomatic with eight uh, grams and able to do everything on a daily basis, I may not transfuse them. Somebody who cannot walk around at home, even if their hemoglobin is 8.5 and you give them blood and they feel better and they're able to function, I change it. I think the general rules we say hemoglobin less than eight, uh, but I really find that this is very variable from one patient to the other and I don't think we can set certain number for every patient. Then the issue whether you transfuse them two units or one unit every time. I think there's some push now from the blood banks to try to minimize transfusions even to one unit. And I think that's even individualized. There are some patients, they get one unit, they get functional. So I always tell the patients we are gonna try it, see where you are, and after a while we figure out a level where they feel it's impacting their daily activities. If it does not, I, I probably am more willing to let the hemoglobin go lower without transfusing them if they don't feel impact on their daily activity. And that one unit is part of the Choosing Wisely campaign right. as well, right? So we right. tend to do the same thing. What are your parameters, Alan? Um, there are a lot of institutional pressures uh, on our parameters uh, because of supply. So we really try not to give platelets unless it's 10,000 or less. Uh, we try not to give transfusion of packed cells unless it's 7.5 or less. That being said, you know, patients who have comorbid illnesses like severe heart failure who really cannot be functional at, at 7.5, we transfuse them for when that's, when they need, to the level that they need to be able to function. I mean, the purpose of our transfusion is to make patients have a functional life. So if you're not able to do that, then there is really no point. Um, so I, we really talk to individual patients about, uh, about the level that's, they need in order to be functional. That being said, in a, a place like New York City where there is a huge demand, you know, we always have to be watchful that, you know, there is limited supply. Yeah. How about you, Jamil? You have a comparable uh, cutoffs, less than seven uh, grams per deciliter for hemoglobin and less than 10,000 for platelets. But I think the problem is uh, when you try to estimate symptomatic anemia. It's very difficult because 90% of the U.S. population is probably fatigued, right, independent of their hemoglobin. So it tends to be a little bit difficult, but I try to also um, individualize someone with heart disease, probably eight. Or, and we have a discussion, mm -hmm. too, about the consequences of transfusion. So the patients need to know, too, that we're trying to avoid iron overload, and especially that could be relevant in people who have low-risk disease. So once they understand why you are being a little bit more cautious with transfusion, they're probably a little bit more on board with that, and they can also participate in that decision. Do I or don't I need that unit today? Uh, our parameters are a hemoglobin of, of 8 and platelet count of 10,000 as well. I, I will tell you part of the education that we've undertaken is that in the setting of a lot of studies that have shown that in the intensive care units you should use a hemoglobin cutoff of 7, that this is an outpatient older population which is very different. So we, we've been able to successfully make that case for a hemoglobin of 8 as opposed to a hemoglobin of 7 or 7.5. But that did take some education within our institution. And, and we can see how our parameters have vary even among the four of us at, who, who practice who MDS every single day. Um, so so there, are, there is a lot of variability around the country.